Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my channel, Hair Delicious. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned on Hair Loss Treatments, my second hair transplant journey in November of 2019 and it's coming up very soon. And anything pertaining to hair loss, um, I've been getting some requests lately to cover the topic of DHI. So in today's video, I will be talking about two of the most popular hair transplant surgery methods, DHI and FUE. And I will also talk about the pros and cons for both of them. Before I get started, if you guys are losing hair and you guys want to find a non-surgical way to regrow hair, look into something known as microneedling. So microneedling helps induce stem cells that promote hair growth. It also increases collagen production and blood flow into the scalp so that the nutrients can get to the hair follicles. There's a lot of people who've had great success and I've actually covered this numerous times in a lot of my prior videos with a lot of before and after photos. So please take a look at some of the older videos. Also, if you guys are looking for a good DHT blocking shampoo, I actually just started launching my very own DHT blocking shampoo on my website, hairliciousy.com, and it's up for sale. It contains many ingredients uh, that are known to block DHT. We have Eclonia Cava, uh, we have salt palmetto, caffeine. It also has vitamins and other supplements that are beneficial for hair. So please visit hairliciousy.com. And for those who've actually purchased it, thank you very much for all of your support. Um, I will go ahead and start shipping them out tomorrow. So thank you for your patience. Now, DHI is known as direct hair implantation and it's also sometimes referred as the Dr. Choi FUE. The hair grafts from the back of the scalp are extracted using a manual or automated extraction device the same way as an FUE procedure. But the difference is when the grafts are implanted into the recipient side. Now, unlike an FUE where the recipient side has to be pre-made by a doctor by making slits to plant the grafts, DHT actually skips this step and they use something known as an implanter pen or device where the doctors and the technicians load each single graft into the pen and then they directly implant the graft simultaneously into the scalp. The site creation and graft implantation is done in one step without having to create a channel incision in the recipient area. Typically a hair transplant using DHI method is usually performed a lot quicker than an FUE or an FUT. Now, some of the advantages of DHI are better control of the depth, the direction, and the angle of each graft that's being implanted because you have a pen and imagine you're just moving it around and implanting at various angles at depths. Now, the other thing is that bleeding is also reduced during the creation of the recipient area and trauma is reduced because everything is just done in one step. Technically, it's going to result in less damage to the blood supply to the implanted area and it can also result in faster healing. There's a lot of clinics that I've noticed in Turkey and India that utilize DHI method since technically it's a lot easier since the recipient sites uh, don't need any incisions uh, you know, before the implantation, which also means that a lot of unskilled technicians and doctors can take advantage of this, especially at you know, hair transplant mills where they perform you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 procedures a day uh, without proper training to implant grafts since they don't have to worry about creating recipient slits. You know, that doesn't mean that DHI is a bad choice because if it's done correctly, it can actually look extremely natural. Uh, there's less downtime when it comes to healing and it's ideal for specific and localized areas rather than covering large areas. One big con that I noticed about DHI starts when, you know, the doctor or the technician actually starts loading up the graft into the pen. This can actually be a risky process that in other hair transplant techniques such as an FUE or an FUT, it can simply end by directly implanting the grafts into the incisions that are already made in the slits instead of actually having to load it into a pen. And then, you know, the fact that you're allowing a mechanical device or a machine to load the grafts and then into the incisions where grafts can actually be damaged it's somewhat worrisome for some people, and especially if your hair follicles are very curly, like an African American hair, that can also damage the hair follicles when you're actually implanting it into the pen. And also, the other thing is cost. Typically, DHI is going to cost a little bit more compared to an FUE. For example, in Turkey and India, DHI is typically about 20% to 25% more expensive than an FUE procedure, and obviously it's gonna be a lot more expensive than an FUT. Now, FUE. FUE is the procedure that I got from Motion Clinic back in 2016 uh, when I got my first hair transplant. It's known as the follicular unit extraction. And this is the same method that I will be getting later this year in November for my second hair transplant procedure. So I'm very excited. Um, so the way that it works is the hair follicles are also extracted from the back of the donor zone 
using an extracting device, uh, you know, whether it be automated or manual. And then we have the doctor who would create slits into the recipient areas uh, before the grafts are carefully implanted. This usually means that an FUE procedure would typically take a little bit longer than an DHI since the doctor has to manually implant each graft while we have the DHI method, which typically has a lot of technicians alongside with the doctor where they would load, you know, anywhere from five to 10 implants or pens with grafts for quicker direct implantation. So, you know, you switch out the pens and you just keep on jabbing and implanting. So in my opinion, I feel that an FUE procedure requires an extremely skilled doctor who is able to create the proper slits at the proper angle and the depth to create a natural looking hairline or just natural results. Uh, some cons when it comes to an FUE involve the fact that recovery time might be a little bit longer than a DHI since there's technically more trauma done to the recipient zone. First of all, the slits are made and then we have the grafts that are being implanted. Less density might also be achieved using an FUE versus DHI since DHI can specifically target areas and use a smaller diameter device to implant grafts. Whereas I feel like an FUE procedure to create slits are normally larger, which can reduce the density and increase trauma to the scalp. I still believe that FUE is the way to go and many hair transplant pioneers have started with FUE and FUT. And you know, nowadays hair transplantation seems to be oversaturated with unskilled doctors and technicians who just utilize DHI thinking that you know they have what it takes to perform hair transplantation. You know the bottom line is regardless of any type of you know hair transplant techniques that you guys are looking for whether it be FUE, FUT or DHI, the most important thing is the skill of the doctor and his or her technicians. Both methods have their pros and cons, but ultimately the results is going to depend on the skill and the expertise of the doctor and the staff. Success rate differences for grass survival for both procedures can be somewhat minimal and negligible. And like I said, it's ultimately going to fall in the crucial hands of the doctor. So it's very important that you guys do very great and in-depth research on hair transplant clinics and the doctor and especially also the technicians because they also play a big part, especially if you go to places like in Turkey. Uh, you wanna make sure that they're highly trained, that they have adequate experience. And you know, the thing is it just takes one bad botched up hair transplant to you know, just ruin your day and just, you know, even for some people just ruin their lives. So make sure to do your research, go to forums, you know, ask people that are very knowledgeable um, and you guys shouldn't have any issues regardless of which method that you guys go with. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, whether you guys are considering DHI, FUE, um, let me know. And also if you have a particular hair transplant clinic that you guys want me to take a look at, I will go ahead and do that free of charge. Just send me an email. It might take a while for me to respond, but if you guys have a clinic in mind, let me know, give me a reason why you wanna go there and some of the research that you have done, and I will do my part in my research, and then I will get back to you telling you guys that you know this is a good clinic to go to, uh, or you know maybe I might tell you guys, you know maybe you might wanna look at an alternative clinic because X, Y, and Z. So that is all for today. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave me some comments in the comment section below and I will talk to you guys next time. Take care.